Hello and welcome to Massive Implications, the show where every two weeks we do a deep dive into a topic or question that of course brings with it massive implications to be dealt with. I'm your host, Jake, and with me as always is my good co-host, Joquin. Hey, how you doing? And this week we're discussing what illegal things should be legal. So to get into it, we each picked 10 different things that we objectively know are illegal, Yep. at least in America anyway. If you're international, it's the country we live in and stuff. Right. Um, And we're saying, hey, these 10 illegal things that we each decided separately should be legal and we're going to make the case why. And we might play a little bit of devil's advocate. That's what it's called, right? Devil's advocate? Yeah. We're going to play a little bit of devil's advocate with each other to see if uh, we can get the best arguments possible. Right. And uh, real quick. Yes. Uh, to be, because we want to talk about the history a little bit here. Mm-hmm. Uh, this topic was originally going to be what if uh, prostitution became legal, right? But but that was kind of it's one aspect. Yeah, and I feel like you can do so much more with this topic. Right. We probably plan on talking about it. I have it on my list. I got it on my list. You got your okay. So we'll overlap at one point. Yep. So uh, we've ranked them in order of how much we care about it. Yes. So we're going to start with the ones we care about the least and then end with the big grand finales. Yep. So uh, given that it's my show this week, <laughs> I'm an odd numbered show. Yep. And it's my topic. I guess I'll start. Go ahead. All right. So my number 10 pick is illegal things should be legal. I think that polyamorous or polygamous marriages should be legal. Okay. There are certain tax benefits to getting married, but right now, at least in America, you can't marry more than one person, even if everyone involved wants to be. Right. I feel like allowing, for example, three or four people in a polyamorous relationship to legally share a life together, there'd be a lot of economic benefits to it. So that's my number 10 pick, the one I care about the least on this list, but I still think should happen. Mm-hmm. And I'll say to that, yeah, that's fine. Uh, just because I don't want to be in a polygamous relationship doesn't mean that other people cannot be. Right. That's that's probably what a lot of the topics, a lot of the laws on both of our lists are probably going to be like. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'm not going to do it, but why Why is it illegal? Like, right. why can't other people do it? It's right. not going to harm me. I'm not a prostitute, but... That, but there you go. <laughs> if you are, we're not going to judge you. With that, my number 10 okay. is, personally, I think that women should be allowed to go around topless. Wow, that's on my list, too, at one point. Okay. We'll get there. My it's only number ten because it's not like I, I guess it, it's not a super important issue, but okay. it is it is a matter of like you know equal rights. Mm-hmm. Men can be around, men can walk around topless just mm-hmm. fine, mm-hmm. but because we like sexualize like we sexualize boobs, right? Women are not allowed to, which is kind of ridiculous in it my opinion. Objectively, is a double standard. It is. You can't argue it's not. It just is a double standard. One hundred percent. So. Yeah, I'm totally with you. All right, for all reasons right. we'll find out later. Um, I'm gonna play <laughs> devils a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you arguments that I don't personally believe. Okay, but I'm gonna echo people that would oppose. Go ahead. But what if a child sees it? What if someone under the age of a certain age sees that a woman is topless? They're gonna you know be okay. exposed to that. Okay. What if a child sees a man topless? But a man topless is not sexually inappropriate. But if we keep, if we have women be topless over time, it would be sexually appropriate. Make a great point. We'll so get there. That, <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get There's there. There's an adjustment period to everything. So, all right, cool. My number nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna sound weirder than it is. Doing taxes. Now, hear me out. <laughs> I'm not saying we need to stop paying taxes. Okay. It's universal death and taxes. You're not getting out of it. I'm, I'm not trying to <laughs> escape the unbreakable system. Sure. But. Just because you're not getting out of it doesn't mean that you can't do it a different way. I'm saying it's objectively illegal for you not to fill out your taxes within a certain period of time because of tax evasion and all that stuff. Right. I propose that given what we know the U.S. government is capable of, the government already knows everything about you that you're going to fill out on that form. For sure. They know exactly how much you make because your income is knowledge to the company and the company files their taxes. Yep. They know everything you bought online because there's a digital footprint that's traceable as hell. Yep. Unless you literally live like Amish, like off the grid, yep. <laughs> you don't have to actually do your taxes. It's just historically been the status quo that the government makes you do it when they're perfectly capable of mailing you a piece of paper that has all their numbers already baked into it, and you either sign that you agree or dispute something on it. Like, everything else works in life. Yes. Just marry it over. I agree. I I 100% agree. Like, 
the only thing the only thing is with that uh how would you do stuff like charity charity like, yeah charity you basically do after the fact i don't know if the government really keeps track on how like you do like charity purchases or like uh your stock investments um, I, I don't know how well actually stocks i think you have to you because you put your social in that case i would say that there are select two or three or maybe like a handful or a dozen specific situations or career paths that you do have to physically file them yep but i'd still say 99 percent. yeah the majority of people <laughs> could just sign a piece of paper and yep. then either get their money mm -hmm. or you pay money right like if you look at like me last year i worked at staples last year i'm gonna get that hot fresh whatever barely above minimum wage thing hot dog <laughs> oh man you worked however many hours a week for this long and the government knows that because why wouldn't they yep sign this saying that you're gonna get this much back in taxes and i'll say yes and if, again, if there is a problem, like if they did something incorrect, yep. I can dispute it. There's always got to be some kind of legal process for that. But other than that, everything is just going to be way easier. Yeah, if I that. mean, like, if we do something incorrect on our taxes, we go they to jail. come after us. <laughs> we go to fucking jail over the, it. So, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, people make mistakes, obviously. Right. And <laughs> I'm sure it, people, the freaking government's algorithms or whatever that know everything about you, they're going to make mistakes, too. Yeah. Sure. Why wouldn't they? That's why you dispute. That's why you dispute. Like uh, when YouTube, we run a fucking YouTube channel. We upload a commentary every week. Yep. Gets copyright claimed, and we fight it. And there's always errors along the way, but YouTube needs those systems in place, so I totally understand it. Yeah, otherwise but people are just going to be, like, uploading full rips of up movies. Full rips of movies, and yeah, you can't have, like, a Wild West, so I totally see it, but that's why you dispute it. Exactly. So, there you go. That's my number nine. Okay. What's your number nine, buddy? Okay, number nine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, no, you're laughing already. Euthanization. Okay. If if you are at a point where the doctor knows you are not going to recover and you're going to live the rest of your life in pain, mm -hmm. I think you should have the choice to be euthanized. Like that's up to you, but I think it, I think it should be at least an option. The fact that it's illegal and that like doctors go to jail for it all the time for euthanizing their patients to give them like a more peaceful yep. way out, other. Otherwise, they're just going to, you know, when they do eventually go out, it's going to be horrible for them. So let me ask you a question, because to an extent, it's already okay. But what would be a situation where it's not okay that you think should be? It's not okay. Uh, the only thing is, who's going to report that they euthanized the patient? Well, I mean, if you do like any kind of test, you'll see, oh, shit, you got euthanized. Why would they test? Yeah, well. it's a, it, So as it is right now. Assuming it is they were healthy, you know. Like, assume if there was a healthy patient that walked in because they, I don't know, like, it, I'm trying to invent I, the situation. What right. I'm saying <laughs> is if the law, if, if we were to create a law allowing euthanization, mm -hmm. you there would be, like, there would be guidelines for it. Like, obviously, if you, you can't just be like, yeah, I want to die. <laughs> yeah, right, that's my question here. That would be the other extreme end where it's right. like, can anybody just walk in, you know? No, 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 no. And I, uh, not to spoil it, but I have a little bit about something similar to what you're talking about. Okay. Um, but yes. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying that, like, euthanization for patients that, like, are kind of, like, brain dead, you're allowed to pull the plug. You know what I mean? That's up to the family. Up to the family, right. That's up to or the family. Or unless it's in his will that he wants to do Right, whatever, right. But either way, yeah. So, I don't know. There's a gray area there, but that's basically kind of it. Not a whole lot else are there situations where there should be euthanization. So like, well, Jake, that's why it's only number nine on my only list. Only number nine on the list. It's a little higher on mine though, and I will get to that. Oh, okay. But my number eight on the list. Okay. Going up to five miles an hour over the speed limit. <laughs> I have never, <laughs> in my life, seen or heard of a car accident caused by going less than five miles over the speed limit. Okay. There's never been a guy who's hit <laughs> someone else because they were going 43 in a 40. I I swear that prop I propose it, 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 to no end do I think about this joke one to no end. I propose right now that we should add five to every speed limit. 70 on the highway is safe as long as you're a safe driver, and it comes down to your driving expertise and experience. So my only fear is there are a lot of not safe drivers. Yeah. So the way I, and I, I, would, I, I, I not to counter immediately, but I would say that they would crash regardless if it's five or not. The way I would propose it, first of all, yeah, I speed. So what about it? <laughs> I, I would say that I regularly and, go five over. Most, in most towns, uh, they actually allow you to go five up and down below the speed limit. Sure. Without like without pulling you over. So but basically, it's kind of not. They can. It's, it, they can. <laughs> 
But I think they need like another reason to pull you over too, not I, just the speeding. I would say that gets down to the state because there are a lot of situations where like I've been pulled over for going like seven over. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just feel like the there's no street on earth that exists in this world that if you add five, we'll have like twice as many accidents. Uh, that just, that doesn't happen. Maybe like windy ways, like, um, like very, like very steep curved roads. No. Cause you know, there's a street near my house. That's very there is. And windy. It's there very is. horrible. The speed limit is like 30 and you can do 35. And as long as it's not like raining, that's another thing like factor in weather. But like, as long as you're fine, then, like I'm saying, like if you're a good driver, you can do 35. I'll on pitch it. this to you. Yep. On your license, when you do your license test, uh, the way I think the way they do it, you should have like the grade you get mm-hmm. kind of influence how much over the speed limit you can go. <laughs> like that because, is an excellent idea. Because that way, when like an old person who is obviously at more of a danger because their reaction time, your reaction time gets worse the As you more get older, you go. Yep. yep have them redo their license test and see if they're safe to drive at a little bit of a faster speed. Okay. Have speed limits be uh, a border, like a suggestion. Mm -hmm. And then like whatever you get on your license test, if you are within a certain range, you can drive like five over the speed limit. Okay. All right. That's not a, that's, you know what? That's not what I was saying, but it's similar. And I like your idea. Okay. I like it. And I like the idea that, like, if you fail, or not fail, but if you get a driver's license and you scored low and you can only do the speed limit instead of up to five over, then I like the idea, like, hey, if you spend six months or a year or whatever driving getting better, yeah. you can retake that test. You can retake the test. Yeah, given a certain amount of time. Hell yeah. All right. So that was my number eight. Okay. All right. Which means my number eight. All right. I'm a bit of a, <laughs> I'm a bit of a nerd. Uh oh. I, I I'm just gonna say it. Uh oh. Jake, do you know what emulation is? Yes. Okay. Oh, quick, perfect. I'm, I'm aware. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think without a shadow of a doubt, emulation. Okay, right now, emulation's in a gray area. Some of it's legal. Some of it's not. I think all of it, 100%, should be legal. Okay. And with that, I think, and this isn't even limited to video games, but I'm just gonna use video games as an, ex- as an example. If a publisher goes out of business and now that game is like in limbo because now technically no one owns the rights to it because no one purchased the rights, mm-hmm. why shouldn't I be allowed to like, why can't I play that game? That's a funny... Why can't I download that game? That is a funny gray area. I think you don't have to limit it to just games, but like games, movies, music, if no one technically owns the rights to it. I think it should just go into the public domain. As it is now, it's just in legal limbo. I would assume that when, let's say, like, if a movie studio, because the way I think about things is movies, if a movie studio went under, their library catalog generally either gets, like, auctioned off or something, like, their licensing properties and stuff like that. Either it goes to a different studio or, like you're saying, legal limbo. Yep. Some movies do go into the public domain like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, emulation is a weird... Because it's not even piracy. You're not stealing the game. You're no. emulating it. You're emulating the system that the game was meant to be played on. Right. It, I guess it's the same, like, the way to analogize it to a film mm-hmm. or even, like, a book or any other thing is, like, if you rewrote Dracula right. word for word, you can sell, I guess, may, could you sell that? Or if I made a fan no, film. No, because that's that would be plagiarism. Ah, that would be plagiarism. So if I made a fan film of, like, I don't know, Avengers Endgame okay. with my buddies and we all acted out every scene exactly the same and I had a film, a three-hour film that I made and I tried to sell that. You could probably do parody law or fair use for that. Depending on what we did with the movie. Depending yeah, okay. on what you did with the movie. Because you, can't, you couldn't obviously show scenes from the movie. Mm-hmm. but I, like I couldn't put it in theaters. That would not right. be legal. Okay, so that's a weird gray area. I like the fair use laws in America, though. I like how it allows a lot of um, freedoms because they they wrote it future proof. I think it's sometimes a little too broad. And you can say it's future proof, but is it really? Yes, because they were written way before the internet was a thing. Yeah, but the internet as it is now, I mean, you've experienced it. Mm -hmm. I think technically, if we were to get down to the brass tacks of it, yeah, you are criticizing in that it can be considered fair use, but you're also showing like a lot of clips. I th- personally, I think that's legal. Yep. I think well, okay, it's it. I don't think it's legal, but I think it should be legal. Is what I'm arguing mm-hmm. here. I you know it's that's funny. why companies like Paramount are so 
hell bent on doing okay it. well our audience because it's on hot quality content right now our audience is familiar with our content so in case you're not if you're the one dude who's not we upload a weekly commentary where we take the footage of a movie commentate over the whole thing and then we edit down the highlights into like a 10 or 20 minute video yep uploads every saturday at 12 30 promoting ourselves um <laughs> so that goes up every week and when we upload a movie nine times out of ten it gets a copyright claim right and i fight it and out of those times i'd say more than half of them take at least a few weeks maybe a month to right. beat copyright maximum time it'll take like a month and a half maybe two months and that's if they take our video down and then after we get the strike we appeal them mm -hmm. because the only way they can keep fighting us is if they legally sue us which, which yes no they, one would do <laughs> they could do it though and they would probably win but at, no they wouldn't do you think so i i am full it hasn't confident been, they it wouldn't. hasn't been tried yet it They're, hasn't and i'll tell you why because they would lose that case do you know why mm. because fair use laws and this is why i love them so much allow for transformative works based on another property okay perfectly fine as look because you can argue 1000 percent that you cannot get the same experience of watching jexy <laughs> as you would our commentary that just shits on jexy the whole time no there's you can't possibly get the same experience of watching transformers 4 as you could watching hot quality contents video about trans. so there's no possible way they could argue that i'm infringing on anything mm -hmm. which is why i love the laws in america of fair use so much okay because we will always win. I think the way it is right now, if you had to go to court, I personally think you would lose. Really? Because these companies can afford lawyers. <laughs> well, I have any money at all, so I can probably buy a lawyer or two. <laughs> but the thing is, I'm but, legally in the right. <laughs> I, th I think they would I think they would win that case. Anyways, to kind of tie into this law, because I told you earlier that I had something that kind of... Uh, this, this, this was off the mic, mm -hmm. but I told Jake earlier that I had 11... But I, I'm going to merge one into it. Okay. With emulation, mm -hmm. I think you should be allowed to make backups of your own stuff. Like, if I have... Yes. If I have a copy of a movie on DVD, mm -hmm. I should be allowed to take a DVD uh, reader on mm -hmm. my computer and then turn that DVD into a video file yep. and then save that. Yes. Uh, sharing it with other people? Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, I was about to say, what you can't do is then sell it. Yeah, you that would be bad, <laughs> right? But I should, I should one hundred percent be allowed to like mod my PS4 mm -hmm. and back up my copy of Spider Man, right? I, Absolutely, and you know what? It's weird too because there's no argument against it. Because if we were to analogize it to like, like you buying your copy of a video game would be the same as like, let's say you bought a car, mm -hmm. you can. As soon as you drive it home, you can take a bat to the whole car, destroy it. You can burn it. <laughs> right, burn a big that fire thing is mine. I, like to do well, what you want with it. I can do legal. whatever I want with it. In general, you can do whatever the hell you want with and to your car because you legally own that car. Right. As long as it, it's not gonna like put. Others as long in as you don't hurt anybody. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but like with a copy of or a Blu-ray of a movie or a copy of a game. You can take that game, you can shred it, burn it, bury it, you could give it all away. Copy it. <laughs> you can you can do all that, but as soon as you copy it to a hard drive, the law gets involved. That's bullshit. That is bullshit. That is absolutely bullshit because you should be able to take your thing and in case, God forbid, a fire breaks loose in your mm -hmm. house and burns down your copies, you have a digital copy. And I'll say, it actually used to be legal. I bet it did. It, up until... There was a uh, ordinance that expired five years ago, so now it is again. It, it is once again illegal. Mm -hmm. So, and you know what? There's arguments for and against it being legal or illegal. Companies I... can argue. If I'm to play devil devil's advocate for myself, mm -hmm. companies can argue. Well, you broke that game. Like, let's say I snap my copy in half, but I still have a backup of yep. that copy. They'll be like, "Well, you broke that game," and if you like hadn't had that backup, you would not be able to play this game. So, um, like, you should just go out and buy another copy of the game. Ah, that is a way to think about it. But the other thing about the company thing is, like, if you make a digital rip of, let's say, your Sonic game that you bought legally, yep. and you make a digital copy of it to back it up, the company could argue that you have duplicated their product. They which could. you've only paid for one, but you own two. Because mm -hmm. in a way, you do own two. You do own two, technically. So, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. It's like, you wouldn't download a car. Yeah, but if you could make a oh, duplicate man. of the car and drive it away, you wouldn't not do that. Yeah, you know? if, I could, if I could download a car, I would 100% download a car. 100%. And then, like... Why not? It, it's the kind of thing where it's like piracy... 
again, you're not taking anything. You're copying a thing. Right. But in a sense, you are robbing, quote, quote, the people who developed that game, the people mm. who produced that game, because you're not paying money for it. You're just taking it. So there's... Uh, uh, you know. If we're going to talk a little bit more about it, uh, disc-based media has a certain lifespan. Actually, all all forms of, like, digital media have a lifespan. Mm -hmm. It's better than, like, analog with, like, VHS VHS tapes where they're, like... Yep. They'll, they'll break after like a 100 watches, mm -hmm. but digital media still has a lifespan. There are CDs that have been made in the 90s that suffer from disc rot and now can no longer be used. Yep. So if you did not make a backup, you'd have to buy another copy. And let's say that company doesn't sell it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to do then? Yep. You're screwed. So you should be allowed to make backups. There are, you know what? Some films that have been called the greatest of all time have mm -hmm. had parts lost. Like, for example, I think it's the second best picture winner ever, the Broadway Melody or whatever, one of those. Um, that one has a sequence in it. It's a black and white movie. But there is a Technicolor sequence in that movie. Mm -hmm. That copy of that movie with the Technicolor sequence in it won best picture. But the movie today only exists without that sequence. Right. That sequence is lost. So if there were at all a way to back that up or save it to some extent, we could literally resurrect a best picture winning movie yep. or at least part of it. You know, like to me, that that's like infinitely more important than our laws right yeah. now. Yeah, And at that point, it becomes illegal. But the only way to have things like that in the world still is through legal means. Yep. Pretty much. So, so I think. That, that's a good point to I, I end think off. You, you and I are seeing eye to eye on this. I, Mostly, I, I, I love think... talking around the technicalities of it because you know it is a gray area. Yeah, but yeah, it's not like um, women going topless where we just one hundred percent agree. <laughs> uh, speaking of, my number seven is uh, women publicly going topless. I do not say this because I'm a straight male, okay. but I am, and I'm happy about that. I have one argument: men can do it, and women can't. That is a double standard. We talked about it earlier on television. This is true. We can show a dude in a Speedo with yep. only his junk covered and his nipples free as can be, but we can't do the same for a woman. She has to wear a bra. Yep. Right now, it would be legal if you were to take the image of a man's nipples and superimpose them over a topless woman's nipples. That is perfectly fine. Yep. The thing is, like, oh, it's culturally taboo. Guess what? A, that image that I've described to you is way weirder and more gross <laughs> than a topless woman normally. And B... Marijuana was culturally taboo too. Look at that now. You, know? uh, you can even argue that like back before clothes existed. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the hell? Was that culturally taboo <laughs> then? You know? Absolutely. And even like today, there are plenty of countries around the world where a woman's breasts being exposed is not inherently sexualized or whatever. Right. So and even today in America, I mean, if you're breastfeeding a child, no one's going to be like, Ugh. okay, some people, okay, so some, some will, people some will, absolutely some are. idiots out there will, but you know, like the vast majority of people walking by somebody breastfeeding are going to be they, like, oh, okay, they're not going to blink twice. They're not going to be like, Gazungas, I can't function. My male brain is short circuit. They <laughs> just be a normal person. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I'm very on your side. Yeah, with that and one. also like in most like. Buildings have dress codes already that require dudes to wear shirts. Right. So, like, in, in, in places of business, it's not going to be distracting. Or, like, right. your job, it's not going to be distracting. Right. You're required to wear, a so like, a uniform. And you know what? Every restaurant in at least this country generally has a unspoken or sometimes spoken policy of no shirt, no shoes, no service. Exactly. Covered. Done. Yeah. That covers that because businesses can request it yep. because they can choose who can and can't and what you have to do to get that business. Exactly. So, so all well and good. The the places <laughs> where you could argue it would be the most distracting, it's already kind of covered. Right. Because you, I'm anticipating the argument against it where it's like, oh, well, so a woman could just walk into a freaking TGI Fridays with you know, <laughs> boobies out and sit down and order. Like, no, because a dude couldn't do that. No. <laughs> No, put your shirt on, sir. Unless it's like a beach context where everybody's in bathing suits. But even then, you probably get dressed before you go in the freaking restaurant. Yeah, I mean... But whatever. I don't know. Nah, I personally don't wear pants when I go out to eat. <laughs> I only take off the pants to go out to eat. Yep. Um, <laughs> that's my number seven. All right. So my number seven actually kind of ties in a little bit okay. with the last one. But not, not, not that much. I should be allowed to fix my own shit. What do you mean? Right now... In Apple's terms of service, they have, like, rules saying you're not allowed to fix your own shit. I'm using iPhones as an example. Let's say you want to get your battery replaced. 
unless you go to an Apple store and have that person do it for you, you're technically breaking the law. You're ta- you're breaking the contract and you are breaking the law by doing that. Okay. So why the fuck can't I fix my own shit? If I know how to fix my own shit, I should be allowed to. I don't need you to be like, yeah, but we want money from like fixing it. Right, right. Like, no. If I had the ability to, why can't I? Or... Why can't you allow people to like make their own shops and ser- like service centers mm-hmm. to fix shit? This is why the argument for like, well, you can't trust them. If you can't trust them, go to the Apple store. But if you do trust them, go to that service center or like do it yourself. If you can trust yourself to do it without breaking it even more like the I should. It's the option to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying if you do make it. Like, if Apple takes out of their contract, like, you have to now fix it. No, I, Apple will still give you that option. I don't think there's ever been a situation where somebody was, like, tried or convicted for doing that. Uh, yes, there was. There was? Yep. Please, educate me. Uh, John Deere. When the you tractor s- guy? Yeah. Okay. You're not allowed to fix your own John Deere equipment, and someone was actually sued over it. Really? And they And John Deere won. I don't remember the specifics of the case. Okay. But John Deere did win. That's crazy. Not not John Deere himself because I'm not sure the he's guy. dead. <laughs> but but the company John Deere won that case. Right, right. Okay, that wow. Okay. Um why can't I fix my own shit? So I guess you're arguing the opposite of the question, which is what legal thing should be illegal? You don't think that a company should put a term like that in their contract. Basically, I think okay. that should be illegal, but the fact that if I break that contract, I could be sued technically. Mm-hmm. It's like Sure, App- is Apple going to sue me? No, but they're probably going to sue the guy making like replacement batteries, and they actually have done that. I bet. Apple yep. has sued screen replacement makers and screen- and battery pro- replacement makers. That's crazy to me. Yeah. That is insane. You have an excellent point there. And on top of that, too, like if you... If let's say there's a warranty on your iPhone, yep, and then you choose to fix it and break that warranty, yeah, that's nothing wrong with the warranty no longer being valid on Apple's end. That's fine. They can reserve that right all day long. That's that's one hundred percent fine. They that's that is that's up to them though. Mm-hmm. That's their choice. But yep. to say that I'm not even allowed to like touch it, like <laughs> if I could fix it, mm-hmm. no. Because even then, like let's say there's a court of law where you replaced your battery. Yeah, I mean, there are certain situations where, like, let's say, I don't know, you drop your phone in such a way where the screen pops off and breaks. Yep. And you simply put it back together, but given the opportunity and you happen to have a battery near you, like, you could argue all kinds Mm -hmm. of bullshit, you know? Like, I feel like those terms and conditions are so hard to enforce. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Apple will know if the phone has been tampered with, but at that point... Uh, Yes, because... (laughs) If we ever do the inverse of this topic, which I think we plan to, we'll where well, what yeah. what legal thing should be illegal? What legal thing should be illegal? Mm-hmm. Putting DRM on your batteries, which Apple has done for mm-hmm. the new iPhones, you are if you replace the battery on an iPhone 13 or 12. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming the 13. It's not out yet, but the 12 and uh, the 12 and I think 11 actually do this. Mm-hmm. If you replace the battery with a non-official Apple battery, even if that battery works perfectly fine, which you would be able to tell if the phone turns on at all, the phone will give you a warning screen telling you this is not an official battery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. That's crazy. And you know what? If they were to do that, they should like disclose that up front in their advertising mm-hmm. because you're going to dupe a lot of people, like a casual people that buy the phone you know, click the terms or of service. Or you fucking sell the parts and let people do it. Yeah. That's enough. If you want to make money, sell the parts. I, I feel like, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. So, all right. That is, you said your number seven? Yes. Okay. So My you're number, number six. six is almost identical to a topic you've already said, assisted suicide. Now, <laughs> okay. This, now, like we were saying earlier, this would not be something where you walk in and say, oh, one suicide, please. And then a dude behind the counter just pulls a gun and shoots you in the head. <laughs> People in very certain situations, whether they have like a terminal disease mm-hmm. or if they sustain an injury that doesn't allow them to work or enjoy their life ever again, I would think it's so much worse to force people in horrible situations to stay alive against their wishes if that's what they want. Mm-hmm. I mean, we clearly don't think all life is sacred in the eyes of the law because there are plenty of situations, say police, for example, where like if they believe a suspect is going to do something harmful, they have the power to shoot and kill them. Right. And nobody objects to that. So even look at like, well, people do object to that. People do in certain. So yeah, absolutely, there are certain situations there, but uh, yeah, that's neither here nor there. Um, 
But a different example, people on life support. Mm -hmm. Like, we already have the power to let them decide, or the family decide, or their will decide if and when they want to be unplugged. I just don't think you need to literally be on life support to make that decision if you're in a permanent state of disarray. Okay. So it's similar to what you were saying. I'm just bringing up a little more, like, um, context. Like, let's say if you're terminal, Mm -hmm. for example. I think if you have terminal cancer and it is a foregone conclusion that you will die in the coming months or years, mm-hmm. you should be able to choose when that is. If there's no hope and you that's it that you have and everybody knows it, yeah. I think you as the person with the cancer should be able to choose that. Absolutely. I, I, I have nothing to I mean we already talked about we, this, we, we, So we, we don't I don't have to be like, well, you know. <laughs> exactly. No, we're we're fine. Because as it is right now, you can't it is not allowed. And you know what? If you try and fail, you get to freaking by force go to like a like one of those. It's not an asylum anymore. What is it? Like a home? Like a care? A yeah, place that it, like it, cares it, for you mentally? Be, be, yes. And what if you don't want to spend your last moments of life in a fucking facility? Like, that's it. Like, come on. Yeah. What's that? What is that going to make you want to do? Die. Die. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, come on. Suffer. <laughs> Like, to me, that's like not as merciful as letting them choose in exact, that state. I will not, I agree. I agree. And again, stipulations like uh, it shouldn't just be like handing out like candy. Like yeah, yeah, just walk in, you're good. There you go, some cyanide flavored caramel. Hot, no, just a gun, caramel. A gun, gun behind the cat. You walk in, boom. <laughs> it's on you. You walked in. Cleanup is gonna be a mess. It's gonna be annoying. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. What's your number six? My number six. Okay. This is the most topical that I think we can do here. Okay. This is this is. This is in the news right now. Hot and fresh. Hot and fresh. The state of Texas recently just banned abortion after six weeks. Okay. What the fuck? <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. There's a lot going on there. I th- Okay. You can put a cap. You you can put a cap, but six weeks is not long enough to decide mm-hmm. whether or not you can raise a child. Also, not for nothing, and again, for full disclosure for the audience, Jokin and I both lean left to some extent yes. so you know politically you know, to, um, disclose that up front but in this context a lot of christians and right-wing people and people who lean in that direction say that life starts at conception that mm-hmm. is generally the philosophy of like you can't abort a child because it's a life and it starts at conception six weeks is six weeks after conception in that case so it's like wh- where is are you just choosing that because of like you feel like it yeah like the law of 18 being an adult <laughs> chief there are mature people under 18 and dumbasses over 18 and 18 is not an adult all right that you can choose where that line is but yes we in america draw the line at 18 anyway you i guess each state can and has the power to draw their own line in the sand but that line doesn't even semantically make sense because what about the sixth week like what what about five weeks and six days makes it fine and then six weeks and one day not make it fine why i don't understand that exactly absolutely like either be full-fledged or not either say it happens at conception or you can't do it up to a certain amount before birth and another thing most women do not know they're pregnant (laughs) by by the sixth week they do not know that i didn't think about that that's so funny you can like (laughs) miss a period you can (laughs) like that happens all the time i know and those tests uh you have to do multiple just to make sure yes you know (laughs) yes and then you have to get like a doctor's appointment like you have to like what are you supposed to do? Like, I know. you ha- you have to plan so far in ahead. You basically have to have sex and then be like, yeah, I'm going to get an abortion <laughs> in case I get pregnant. Yeah. I'm going to check every single day after I have sex. Yeah. That is bullshit. That is crazy. I'm not, uh, listen, I hate the fact that men have, like, most of the power mm-hmm. in this situation. You look yep. at, like, Texas, Texas, like, Senate. Mm-hmm. And it's basically all men that have that power. They're all men. They're all over the age of sixty. They're all white. Yep. Like they all have the same features. Yes. There's no no mix up. I'm not even talking like racially, but like age wise, experience wise, they all have to come from the same fucking career. Yes. Like get some diverse opinions and people in there. No, they don't want to. They don't. They don't want. To. I'm sure. Okay. <sighs> we'll probably talk about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, it, if we reverse the topic, we'll talk about legal things being illegal. We'll talk about voting. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> we'll yep. talk about voting. Sure. <sighs> Anyways. Yeah. That's Anyways, fair. That's I feel fair. like I feel like I, I I said all I can. Honestly, if abortion were illegal in America, I would absolutely have this as like almost number one, if not number one. Yeah. But, but the it, fact that almost anywhere else you can totally get one and come right back and be fine without anybody finding except out. Except 
in if you live in Texas, there is an abortion hotline where you can report people that have gone to another state and gotten an abortion after six weeks. Okay, so it's 1984 down there. Yeah. But <laughs> the thing is, and you get ten thousand dollars if you report someone and it turns out to be true. 1984, the book, not the year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, yeah, absolutely, you have an excellent point in that situation. But um, given that 49 of the 50 states. Or there's probably one or two that are very similar, but generally states aren't Texas. That is a fact. <laughs> um, I'm pretty most, satisfied. Most states are not Texas. Yes, I'm satisfied with our country as is regarding that because Roe v. Wade, ninety five percent holds up for yes. areas in America. Yeah. So I'm happy about that situation. Oh. I'm mad about that situation. I'm mad. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm mad about Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. I'm fair enough. I'll I'll I'll, I'll concede that a little. Okay. Bit. You're uh, you're um you're number five. My number five. Treating a red light as a stop sign if the intersection is clear. If I pull up no. <laughs> to a stoplight in the middle of the night and I clearly see there's nobody in the other lane that's green, then there should be nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with me driving forward after a proper three-second stop. I stand by that. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know. Here's my concern. Mm -hmm. Here's my concern. I have a big concern. If it's middle of the night, what if someone doesn't have their headlights on or their headlights are Then out? they're breaking the law and they should go to jail. They're breaking the law, but it, you would be putting yourself in danger at that point. You do anyway when you drive at night, if that's your case. That's fair. You do fair. If, if you're following the laws, if someone could just kill you. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> true. In that context, there have been situations where I'll go up to a, an intersection in the middle of the night, nobody around, and I look and I see, like, let's say, like a mile down the road mm -hmm. in my other direction, and there's no one coming. I think to myself, okay, I'm going to go treat this as a stop sign. If I drive through this intersection and somebody from the other lane hits me and they had their lights on, they would have to travel at 500 miles an hour <laughs> to have hit me, which implicates them 100%. So I'm fine. Like, there's no way yeah, that I like, could ever be at fault. They are like the... the, the... <laughs> like the you picked like the less of two evils. No, they are the most evil. A hundred percent. And you can even in court if you want to say it's ninety nine percent theirs, one percent mine, I'll take it. Yeah. But that's still fine. <laughs> like, come on. The way I think you should handle it, you should just have the like you just like yellow. Proceed with caution on all four intersections. If there's nobody around. If there's no one around. If it past a certain point at night. Have the lights flash yellow so you it's proceed with caution. Right. And there are already, like, I first of all, I completely agree. That's also a great, great way to go about this. Um, there are also a lot of lights and intersections that have pads under the tar of yep. the pavement that detects if a car or a motorcycle even is on top. Yep. Um, actually, some motorcycles are lightweight enough where they don't, but that's neither here nor there. If it's flashing light, it still works. But let's say it's a flashing light four-way intersection and there's no one around the middle of the night and they're flashing yellow because there's no cars. If your car drives up, it turns green for you because there's no cars in the other lane anyway. Yep. And it starts the cycle for a while, and then you just drive forward. Or you're a bike. You drive up on your motorcycle. Too light to go off. It's still yellow. No one's around. Go forward. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't see anything wrong with that at exactly. all. Exactly. And as long as you got your lights on, a car in the opposite situation, the perpendicular lane, the other reverse lane, would see you if you have your lights on because you're being safe at all and not a horrible person. And they'd be like, oh, shit, there's a bike there waiting to go. I guess I'll proceed with caution. Like, there's, no matter how you slice it, you're not going to get in an accident if no one's around unless you steer yourself into a tree. Yep. Which applies in any situation when you drive. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why I feel about that. All right. So. What's your number five? My number five, and <laughs> we talked about this earlier. Okay. Prostitution. All right. This Can is... I jump in? That's my number four. Oh, okay. Uh, we've been waiting to talk about the same subject, but that is the next one I'm going to say. So <laughs> We're just, literally right back to back. Let's just go into it together. We have a lot of the same topics, we by do. the way. We do. So, so get into it. Uh, basically, the way I see it, I'm not going to... I'm I'm not gonna have sex with a prostitute. Okay, but that's like the same thing. Like I'm not gonna smoke weed. Mm -hmm. Like, but that doesn't mean like other people shouldn't be able to. Yep. Is sex work is work. I don't know why people get like so upset about a woman like using their body to make money. Yep. Men do the same thing. Like it's a like actors. Fucking, you telling me like like. Uh, fucking Chris Evans. Mm -hmm. You telling me he wasn't hired to be Captain America because he's fucking <laughs> ripped? No, it's this. It's the same idea. Mm -hmm. So like, have prostitution should be legal. Have like just a list of rules that you have to do. Like protection is mandatory, one hundred percent. 
And uh, if you don't use protection, consequences are on you. Yes. You know? Yes. So, you know, you can even be like a licensed, uh, not that you'd want to advertise. Some people <laughs> like this, you know, it's like inappropriate. I licensed prostitute. Yeah. yeah licensed you, prostitute. Okay. That sounds weird to us now, but like if it were to be legal. Right. Over like a couple years, it, it would be fine. It'd become, yeah, it's a lot of, it's like freaking a lot of other things on this list we've exactly. talked about like it's a cultural um, adjustment like with boobies yeah. so yeah prostitution <laughs> being legal Boobie. is totally legit and to add on to that in america it is illegal to pay someone for sex unless you film it and put it online that's called pornography yep the only difference between hiring a porn star and hiring a prostitute is if you're doing it to make a sex video yep. if you're not making the video it's illegal mm -hmm. and if you are it's legal. That's clinically insane. Yes. You'd figure that'd be reversed. Not. I want both legal. Let me be clear. <laughs> I love porn. But that's insane to me. If I'm to quote the late, great George Carlin, mm -hmm. paying for stuff is legal. Having sex is legal. Paying for sex should be legal. That totally tracks. That totally tracks. So there we go. I don't know why it's not. I mean, I guess I kind of know why it's not. There, like, there are countries that, that Australia, it's yeah. it's legal. You yeah. go to a prostitute parlor. I, I get fucking pa prostitute. It, it's a brothel is what you're A thinking. brothel, yes. yes. But you know, they have a list of rules mm -hmm. and like government makes bank off of the taxes. Right. Like well, let's, that's the same thing with weed. Like the government makes bank. Also, not for nothing, but I mean, this is a problem I have with a lot of like, um, you know, religions that say that like you should raise your kids to not even think about sex at all ever and never masturbate until you're old enough to marry. Well, that's and then stupid. It, to me, it's like human beings, our bodies are literally wired and designed to have sex as the best thing ever. But it's the cardinal sin, Jake. It's the you're not supposed sin. to. You're not supposed to go into your desires. Deepest desires. You're, no. You're, you're a monster if you I do know, that. I know. I'm a horrible monster. You need to get. You need to repress that, Dude. and then once you repress it so far, like you're. I am. Either... A, I am a horrible monster. Like three or four times a week, it feels amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, not for nothing, but like humans are designed to have sex be like the greatest dopamine hit ever yep. in your head. It's a natural, natural thing. I agree. It's it's up there, wired to be more important than like food. Which is stupid because food is to live, but sex but it, it, it's it's so important to us because we want to continue the human race, right? Like that's, that's why. Like, that's why. But like, but just because, just because, like it. But like, it if feels you ask good. Anybody in the world, would you rather right now eat a meal or fuck? <laughs> Over ninety percent would say fuck, <laughs> and you know that's true. Like it's the funniest thing. So like, we're wired that way. So yeah, no prostitution. If anything, life would improve. General American life yeah. would improve if it were illegal. I think just sex ed. Uh, why is sex ed mandatory? I know. Uh, sorry, no, sorry. Not why? Mandatory. Why is sex ed mandatory? Uh, not mandatory. I almost right. said it twice. Like, why? Why do you get to choose that for your kids? Mm -hmm. And again, that's not you picking like whether or not you learn or not. That's the you're deciding for your kid. They should. Yeah, yeah. They would be better equipped in life if they had. An Absolutely. Yep. The, it, yeah, but if you teach them, they're going to use that knowledge. I can tell you right now, half the stuff I use in school, I'm never going to use in my life. Yep, and on top of that, too, if you've ever used a public bathroom, you get sex ed all around you <laughs> with those drawings. All right, you're fine. Yeah. I'd rather get it professionally than if you've had the back alley. <laughs> if, if, you, if you have the internet, you have sex ed all around you. 100%. Right. And everyone here knows it, and everyone listening knows it. Exactly. <laughs> So uh, let's yeah. not let's not be fucking let's not be stupid and try to hide it from the kids. Yep. So that was your five and my four. So just go into your four. Oh, yeah. Okay. You kind of get two turns. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Spicy. Spicy. Homelessness. Okay. Why is that illegal? What is the, what is yeah. a why what is a homeless person going to do to stop being homeless? Other than the government helping them out or other like like public citizens helping these homeless people out of a rut. What are they supposed to do? Okay. They can't get a job because even if they like got accepted on the application, right? Mm -hmm. it, like, okay, what's your address? Ooh, <laughs> yikes! Was, you can't even shower most of the time if you're homeless. I know. Like, no job's gonna hire someone that like reeks. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, some pe some jobs. Yeah, fair. We uh, when we both worked at Staples, we had some pretty <laughs> raunchy people. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, fair enough. But um, or even there's like jobs like like manual labor jobs who have no standards yep they'll hire felons they'll hire smelly yeah. people it doesn't matter as long as they can do manual labor and a lot of that is under the table which is illegal yep so why is homelessness illegal i know and okay so 
Joaquin, I am completely with you. Let me play Devils if you don't mind. Go ahead. Let me. Let I me like play. to. I'd like to see what All you right. got. We're, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pretend that I am the opposite. Got, got Here we you. go. Okay. But if you make homelessness legal, then that'll incentivize people to go homeless, not pay bills, and break into people's houses. And you got cats living with dogs, and hell breaks loose. Okay. Joaquin. All right. So, so <laughs> breaking into people's houses illegal. Yeah. That's not gonna change. <laughs> You think anybody wants to be homeless? I'm sure there's a like a like a small a small minority of people that are like, yeah, I want to live off the grid. First of all, they already do. That's different. <laughs> yeah, they pretty much already do. That's different. I'll say like 99 percent of homeless people do not wish to be homeless. Right. But they cannot stop being homeless. But the fact that they are homeless is illegal. <laughs> And also, homelessness, like, yeah, sure, I guess one can choose it, but generally, it's just a state of being. You happen to end up homeless. Yes. After, I don't know, a house fire, and also you got fired. Yeah. Uh, two unrelated words of the meaning of the word fire. But um, if that happens at the same time, I guess you are homeless. But uh, yeah, no, so you're absolutely right about that. That's that's just the way I see it. Yeah, it's fair well, enough. Stop, stop being stupid. Stop. <laughs> All right, so now, my, now, uh, yeah, we're now you're the, number four. No, that was my. Oh, sorry, you're number three. Right, because we dodged one. So I'm on number three. We are in the top three position gotcha. right now. We are in the top three. All right, my number three is all exotic pet laws. The amount of Ooh. animals that you cannot have as a pet is staggering. I propose getting rid of every single law against it. If someone wants to own a tiger, make them get a license, sign some documents, and make sure they're going to love and take care of it. Like the same rules for a dog. I see no argument against it. These animals are not domesticated. Domesticate them! The wolf wasn't domesticated. There are still wolves. You can argue that domestication is like a, a horrible process that human beings do. Like we uh, we he... basically took away like these traits from these animals and we mut we mutilated their traits so much to the point they're they're, they're a mockery. Uh, that's what that's what I'm saying. Well, are you I also... are you for or against pets? I'm for personally, I don't think that like breeders should be legal or kennels i don't think i don't think that stuff should be legal you should not be allowed to like sell pets really okay i think i think you would actually i would disagree with you on that animal shelters it's a far more humane way of doing it and you're helping that animal because otherwise that animal would be put down okay that's why i don't think that like breeders should exist and kennels should exist because it, like it's the humane aspect of it um let me ask you a question assuming that no pets were in a horrible situation where you'd need to rescue them. Do you think breeders should be legal? No. No, still no? No, because I don't think you should be allowed to sell a, a, a living being. That's basically where it, well, what it comes down to. Well, how else would you acquire a pet? Shelters. <laughs> Animal shelters, <laughs> okay. Jake. Well, I, okay, so... Again, like, breeders, most of the time, like like 90% of the time, they're doing incest... Mm -hmm. So you have pure breeds. Yep. It's disgusting. It is that's disgusting. Not, that's not humane. Uh, well. If I think you, you should make the... the I think... <laughs> it's not, not to interrupt, but this goes back to episode one. Is it humane? Do you apply humane, quote, quote, things that we would apply to us as humans? Like, we view our... In, like, if we were... Humans have incest as taboo, right? That yes. is a gross thing, and it makes inbred things. Yes. In the context of pets, the fact that something has performed incest, we call that, it's pure-blooded. It's very nice in the breed. It's made this cat have a smooshed in face, and it's a Peruvian expensive cat or whatever. Yeah, no. A that's, Persian that's, cat. That's, that's what I awful. At, he, the argument there, you're arguing, like, should that be considered inhumane? That is a human deciding to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is inhumane. Well, it's because the don't... cat isn't capable of even understanding that question. Right. So, so the human has to decide there. Like I again, you don't you should not be allowed to sell animals. Well, okay, so like, you you obviously support the concept of a human owning a pet, right? Yes. Okay. So ninety nine percent of the time, you go to an animal shelter and you get like a cat. You're you just made that cat's life so much better. You did. If yep. you didn't, then you're gonna fucking that cat's gonna die. Mm -hmm. Like that's a far better alternative. Like you're giving that cat a much better life mm -hmm. by going to a shelter and adopting them. Okay. Well, I, that's not really 
because I'm arguing against exotic pet laws in the sense that I want people to be able to own the same situation as you're talking about, but with a pet that they're legally not allowed to own. Yes, but people would start selling tigers. Or a sloth. I can't own a sloth in the state of Massachusetts, by the way. I, I walked into it. I wanted to. You want to own a sloth? I do want to own a sloth. Work at the zoo and be very friendly with their sloth. First of all, that would satisfy my sloth-related urges. I love sloths so much. I would love to touch them. They're so They're nice. They're not domesticated, though, Jake. And the the, okay. the act of domesticating them would take, first of all, in, in your lifetime, you would never be able to. <laughs> like... It take it takes like it hundreds. If one not of the reasons because I was planning on just getting one anyway. But one of the reasons is you're right. Sloths need a very specific environment and diet, and I'm just not financially trying to do that right now. <laughs> so, but in any case, if I be, win the lottery, I'll probably get a sloth. But, <laughs> and it, my point is, sloths. Sh there should be an option for you if you do want to spend the money. If you're like an upper class family mm -hmm. and you have, let's say, an enclosure that is very tropical for them, and you have a certain diet, you should be able to do that for a sloth. For let's say a Bengal tiger, as long as it's not harmed, if as, as long as you're gonna treat it well, like you would treat a dog if you are a good person, then mm. I think it should be okay to own an awesome thing. Yeah, I just I disagree. Well, okay, so the... I disagree with owning exotic animals because they're not domesticated, and I completely separately I also disagree that you should be able to sell pets. Okay, that's so like. I disagree with your thing, and then I'm disagreeing with, with another point. thing, yep. okay. which is somewhat related, but not your thing. I will go into both real quick. Okay. Um, the exotic pet thing, I'll just say that domesticated is a pretty broad word. Um, if I buy, like, a Bengal tiger, mm -hmm. which I brought up as an example, not that I want to own one, but wouldn't that be cool? Um, if I bought a Bengal tiger and had it, like, let's say I have, like, an awesome five acre or whatever backyard where like a horse would live yep you know people can hone horses today that's all chill and well and they're good. domesticated yeah yeah so why couldn't i take a bengal tiger which is not domesticated and let it live back there and feed it every so often why and leave, keep it alive and keep it happy and because it would be much it. happier in the wild it well have you seen tiger king I, I've seen Tiger King, yes, but Tiger King, Mr. Tiger King, I forget his name, Joe Exotic. That, That's his name. Damn, those memories, that really came and went, that whole craze. Oh, huh? absolutely. That was like a month gone. <laughs> um, no. Well, that was like the start of the pandemic, so we just needed something to watch. Everyone and their grandma watched Tiger King yep. that day, yeah. That was crazy. No, um, Tiger King, you saw it yourself in the documentary. They they did horrible things to those tigers. They mm -hmm. abused them to the point where the tiger started lashing out and ate a dude's arm off. Do you not <laughs> think that's what the what most people would probably do if they could own tigers? Well, a domestication of an animal does not require abuse. True. You could domesticate it and still have a friendly relationship with it in the sense that if I were to feed a Bengal tiger who lived in my acre backyard, <laughs> if I fed it like a slab of meat every so often <laughs> and it was well fed and it was happy and we played fetch with a big old tree log, that sounds like a nice happy relationship to me. Until it rips you in half. But it wouldn't because I'm a nice person and it's well fed. No. It has no reason to rip me in half. Animals don't have reason to do anything. Yeah, so why would I give it a reason to rip me in half? If I attack it, it has, it's going to rip me in half. But why would I do that? I don't know. I feel like because it's not domesticated, it's it has those wild tendencies. It's going to rip you in half eventually. I, I still feel cats, like you can... Listen, okay. cats are domesticated. Yep. A cat will attack you. Are you... Okay. Or just the, just the fun of it. A cat will attack then you. Then let's take an animal that could not possibly harm me. Let's take a sloth, okay. for example. Let's assume hey, that I had hey, the fun You ever see those claws? Yeah, they are large, and they're moving at one mile an hour. Well, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I just want to talk about that a little bit, yeah, too, go because ahead. that's a little bit kind of easier to, to deal with. Let's say, let's say I owned a sloth. I can't believe how much time we're spending on this topic. Um, let's say I owned a sloth. This and is what I, happens when we disagree with each other. That's exactly what happens. And I think those are the more fun conversations. Yep. Uh, let's say I owned a sloth and I financially could support one. And I had the certain diet and I had the certain environment that mm -hmm. it could live in, certain yep. temperature. And I interact with that sloth and I pet that sloth. That sloth's so happy and I'm so happy. I, you could call that domesticated. And you would also call that a situation where it's not abused, and that fits below the criteria. Okay. So I don't see a problem with that. S maybe certain animals then. Okay. A li you can you can go through a list of animals. I d I don't agree with it, and I think you're putting the animal's life and you're making the animal suffer more than because you're doing that for your enjoyment basically. 
I think you're making the animals suffer. The animal probably would rather be in the wild. That's the way I see it. I don't know if the animal really understands anything other than eat, well, fuck, don't die. Well, let's. <laughs> I'm. I mean, like, look at Sea World. Look at those orcas. Right. They're I'm not sea worlding my orcas. <laughs> Again, that ties into abuse. I would not want to do that to my animals. Sea World has so much money, and look at what they're doing with those animals. Okay. Is and it's sloth living in an enclosure that I have in my own house and well fed. Is that an abusive context? Be, or is that domestication to the point where it's abusive? I don't. It's not domestication because you cannot domesticate an animal that isn't domesticated already. Yeah, fair. It takes thousands. Of it years. takes thousands. Of <laughs> um, Even hundreds if they're a certain kind of animal. But go yeah. on. Uh, I just remembered something. You can own some non-domesticated animals. Snakes are not domesticated. You can own a snake. You can own a snake. Depending on state, yes, you can own a snake. You can own a lizard. Sloth, I don't know if there's anywhere where you can own a sloth, but this is kind of like a... Nowhere sells them, I'll tell you that. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Anyway, yeah, we've spent a little bit too long. Yeah, that. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was that What was that number for you? That was number three. Okay. What is your number three? My number three. The war on drugs. Okay. Joe Quinn. I hate to jump in, but that is my number two. So let's just do it. You want to do it? I'm ready to do it. Uh, I, uh, I, I'll let you, you start. It's your thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, so basically, my thoughts on it is it was it was a shit plan to basically just like harm these like low income communities, mm-hmm. like what like sending people to jail for like marijuana. Mm-hmm. Like having it back in the seventies, that that shit's that shit's dumb. People are still in jail because of that. Like let them free. And like some drugs, weed for instance, you can only keep a certain amount on you in your person at a time. Yep. Like I don't know about like selling it, but the fact that you can't even carry like a certain amount with yep. you, that it's kind of ridiculous. Now let me be clear, because I am fully with you on this one. Let me be clear. You are, of course, referring to everything from something as tiny as marijuana to top shit like meth and heroin. Yeah, if you're, you should not go to jail for meth and heroin. Okay. You should get, you should go to like an addiction center, but not sure. jail. Sure. Okay. That's not jail is not the right path for you. Okay. All right. Um, Joaquin, I agree with pretty much almost everything you just said. Um, I'm gonna elaborate a little bit too, and I also. In certain situations, I would say you should not get in trouble at all for meth and heroin, mm-hmm. given if it being legal. And I'll tell you why. We have seen this throughout history. Alcohol is illegal. People break the law to get it. They make it legal and then put some rules about driving a car so you don't endanger people. Everybody's happy. Yeah. Marijuana is illegal. People break the law to get it. This country's in the process of making it legal. It's already decriminalized where we live. Right. And put some rules on it like driving a car so you don't endanger people. Everybody's happy. I don't see a feasible difference between these and harder street drugs. I can only see one criticism. Harder drugs are much more addictive. To that, I say two things. One, a few years back, I believe before 2017, Portugal legalized all drugs, and they saw a 50% drop in heroin addiction and an 80% drop in drug-related deaths. Hmm. The other aspect... Okay. Considering the underground drug trade of cocaine and heroin and meth and everything else under the blue moon, they bring in billions of dollars every year, Mm -hmm. untaxed and untraceable, legally anyway. That means that there's a demand for it. If we taxed and regulated them, you'd basically kill criminal empires in a matter of months or even weeks, and you'd eventually get people who use them recreationally just like alcohol. Yeah, there'd be outliers who develop develop like a serious meth addiction or a serious heroin addiction, but we already have Alcoholics Anonymous. It'd just be a natural extension of that in that context. There should be situations where a person who's over the age of 21, or you can set it wherever you want, you can say over 25, can go to a store or go go to a party, hang out, get some alcohol, try a little bit of meth, hang out with some (laughs) friends. I'm weaving it in naturally and then wake up the next morning and go, damn, what a fun day. I'm going to go back to my normal, boring work life now. You got to do a little more meth. That is the future I envision where all drugs, including the worst ones ever, like, you know, even like LSD where you trip and balls, those should be legalized and recreationally used. And if you have a serious problem, there should be services for you. Uh, boom addiction is <laughs> my only thing with that is addiction is such a a scary thing and it is you see people where their life has been like ruined by drugs that's my fear like drugs absolutely do change your life right can i counter that uh, go ahead okay um i would say that lung cancer from cigarettes also 
claims a lot of lives, and then drunk driving because you're an alcoholic would also kill a lot of people. Those people need a lot of help. Yes. But most people that drink are not like that, and most people that smoke cigarettes, oh yeah, cigarettes is just a route to freaking death. But even either way, they can, you can still quit if you try. You can you quit. Can, it, it's hard, though. It is very difficult, yes. Yeah. And uh, another thing is, like, I don't know about making the drugs legal but i don't think the punishment should be jail like i said before i think it should be like rehab centers and maybe not even a punishment but i I don't know how you would go around that i think for a lot of drugs i think that i think it's fine like like weed sorry legalized whatever Mm -hmm. i would just go Uh, with it for all drugs because as alcohol predates weed in terms of being okay here mm -hmm. And alcohol, objectively, based on chemical addiction, based on situations it's caused, is objectively, based on the numbers, worse than smoking weed. Because you can't become chemically dependent on weed where you can with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And you can become way more chemically dependent on things like heroin. But also caffeine. And also, like we're saying, cigarettes and stuff like that. So So with with cigarettes, with cigarettes, I mm -hmm. I think it's very important with cigarettes, for my stance on it, you can get rid of the stuff in cigarettes that, like, causes lung cancer. Yes. And but co- I don't know why companies, like, put half that shit in there. <laughs> like, to make it more addictive. But, like, the yeah. tobacco is, like, the main primary ingredient as to why it's addictive. And in, that's not yeah. that's not necessarily damaging. At least not as much as, like, the other, like, preservatives you put in these fuckers. So I'll tell you what. I'm not usually for commercialism. But imagine a free market enterprise on meth. In the situation where you have different companies competing to make the best meth that is the least bad for you. I don't know if the FDA is going to approve something like heroin, though, Jake. Well, if you were to make drugs legal, then... I don't think the FDA is still going to approve that, Jake. Well, it wouldn't be... It's very damaging, Jake. It wouldn't be street heroin, Joaquin. It would be Ah, something a little bit different and modified. The fresh stuff, huh? The (laughs) the fresh commercial stuff that has a lot of warning labels on it that they (laughs) legally have to put on it. Maybe, like, like, you can prescribe it. Yeah, they already kind of do. Yeah, like, so, like, mushrooms are now starting to get prescribed by certain doctors. Yeah. Like, that's that's fine. I, I mean, go. your doctor's literally recommending it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, if you'll notice, over time, more and more things like drugs and more and more types of drugs and substances mm-hmm. that alter your state of mind and your physicality, more and more of those are not getting more and more illegal. They're becoming more and more legal mm-hmm. as time goes on. So... I want to bring it all the way. That's all I want to do. Okay. Because that's I I foresee that like a hundred years from now is like where that's going to be mm-hmm. at least you know to some extent. And maybe there's an exception. Maybe I'm wrong about heroin. Maybe you have a point there. Yeah, that's I think only like, I think bad. You, what <laughs> I, you got to draw the line somewhere. Fair enough. For, that's my that's my point of view on. Okay. It. All right. Well, that was my number two and your number three. So what's your number two? My number two. Why can't felons vote? Oh, I didn't know this. I'm sorry, I'm not up to date on my, oh, yeah. my Convic- law. Convicted felons are not allowed to vote. Okay. It is against the law for them to vote. Yeah, everybody back then was just like a foaming at the mouth racist. Yep. And they were trying to they were trying to make it so black people cannot vote. Mm-hmm. So they brought a lot of laws in where you would be convicted as a felon mm-hmm. and they would just like give these to black people so they couldn't vote in elections right like any way possible to like get it so that people cannot vote Mm -hmm. they want to do a convicted felon they've already had their punishment what's a felon gonna vote for that's like gonna make the world dangerous like (laughs) like seriously like what what is a felon going to do like how is a felon gonna vote that's gonna be like oh yeah all knife stabbing should be legalized. <laughs> like, no, that's not how that works. No political candidate is advocating for knife stabbing. Is exactly. Your point. <laughs> so why can't they vote? That's a great point. Um, I didn't even think about that. I guess my devil's advocate would be, it, depending you, on what state you live in, the vote really doesn't matter that much. In the sense that, like, look at Massachusetts. Every single election for the past, like, what, 20 years? We've always been left and by a large margin. So it's gotten to the point where, like, during my pre- recent election, uh, election, my election to be president, my recent vote um, in 2020, and I'm not going to talk about who I voted for, but I'm going to say that I don't feel like it mattered because before it even started, I'm like, wow, we're going to be like two thirds blue on this. And then, oh, lo and behold, 66 percent of mass voted for Biden. And it's like, wow, wow, that's fucking shocker. I feel like I did anything. Mm-hmm. I could have voted third party, would have done fuck all. 
You know? <laughs> My argument against that is the more people to vote, like the more varied things will be. Like Yeah. That's that's basically that's basically True. it. If like, you had like a hundred thousand Jake Camaras in mass and we all voted for uh Martian to be mm-hmm. president, they'd friggin' look how, mass would win. Look how that. close the vote in Florida was. That's true. And that's a state that like makes it like incredibly hard for you mm-hmm. to even vote to begin with. Right. And again, maybe all I'd... these states that like were super against mail in voting. Like mm-hmm. look at the previous president that was like uh, heavily against that. Right. And you're totally right about that and I bet you that if I lived in like a swing state, mm-hmm. things would, I'd probably feel a lot differently about that. Yeah, your vote definitely matters more, which it shouldn't. I think we should do popular choice. Uh, mm-hmm. not pop. I think we should do popular vote, but also ranked choice voting. Ranked choice is not a bad idea. You you just said that you don't think your vote matters. If half of your vote like went towards something, it, it's like math and percentages. I don't want to get into it too much here, but I think your vote would matter much more if we did ranked choice. You make a good point where like no possible vote of a felon could make something you know like knife stabbing. There's no knife stabbing party. I get that. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> I guess that'd just be like another quote quote punishment like to decentivize people from committing crimes okay not that many criminals care about their vote okay. but like the ones okay, that do at least i mean they're still paying taxes there and they taxes. can't vote well they that's because ha- paying taxes is a, not a good thing for you because you have to pay taxes. i know but like you're paying taxes <laughs> and you, if you can't vote that's that's taxation without representation jake you well, have no say. Well, it's more you, like yes, you can you can say it's like a it's a punishment, but uh, an everlasting punishment. You just served however long you did in prison. That should be enough of a punishment. Fair. Like I again, if 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 voting allowed for things like the get stabbed in the chest party, then maybe <laughs> maybe we can have a conversation. But I, the way I see it now. There's already a lot of shitty people in the world that don't commit crimes, mm-hmm. or at least are not committing crimes that, like, are are felonies, mm-hmm. so they're still allowed to vote. I guess the reason why, and we'll move on really soon, but, like, the reason why I'm not so passionate about that topic is a part of me is still saying, like, oh, you really want to vote? Maybe you shouldn't have committed the crime then, is how my brain is still thinking about this. Mm, the way I'm thinking about it is, again, you've already done the, you've done the crime, you served your punishment, you're... I'm not saying you're allowed to vote in jail. like <laughs> That would be weird. You're right. That would be weird. <laughs> but like you're out of jail. You've already served your time. You're a reformed member of society. The fact that they're not allowed to vote, yeah, it, it's a, you're stigmatizing them. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're, you're basically putting a blanket on them. You're weighing them down, saying like, no, now you can't do these things because you did something 20 years ago. Okay, well, you know what? I will say this. I've never thought about that issue terribly much until you've brought it up today. Mm, I've, I've never considered felons in voting, so that was your number two? That was my number two. So, Jake. My what, number one. What's your number one, Jake? All right. Well, <laughs> it's going to be big. It's a big one. Okay. And I stand by it, and I am t- I don't know how you're going to feel about this. I don't know what you're going to think about this. Ooh, okay. All right. It, it, it's not, like, horrible, although I guess one could say it is. But like, Well, last episode... You did decide to bring Hitler back. In a certain context, go listen to it, please, for clarification. I don't want to sound like a crazy guy. I firmly believe that two consenting adults should be allowed to fight to the death. I would even extend this to pay-per-view events, kind of reviving the ancient Roman concept of the Colosseum. As long as everyone involved consents and we're all agreeing, there should be nothing wrong with live-streamed MMA-style tournaments. MMA is actually a perfect example because there are already situations where, like, like some martial arts events where the people involved get bloody and bruised and their head starts swelling from the fight. That's already a thing. Yeah. That can get pretty visceral. It's live, you know. If shit happens, shit happens. Right. And there have been very select cases of televised things where people die in the ring. Yes. That very historical account of Apollo Creed dying to Rocky, mm-hmm. um, the documentary series Rocky. Um, no, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, but I, I am serious about it in the sense that, like, there are situations where, like, hey, MMA events have happened where people get critically injured. Yes, and one could die in the ring if they're not careful. So why not make it allowed if everyone agrees that that could be an option here? Jake, why the fuck not? Yeah, no, oh, I was f- nervous. Why the fuck not? I was nervous for a lot of your things. I'm like putting like scenarios like where you could apply this Mm -hmm. if you were to do that you have to sign up a year before 
Mm -hmm. gives you a whole year to rethink your life, to rethink yep. and decide whether or not you want to do this. That is cr that's such a good idea because you know what? There's already rules about when you buy a gun, there's like a, what, is it 28 days yes. waiting period? Something like that. Just in case you, you, your wife cheats on you and you're like, I'm going to shoot that guy. You buy a gun. Well, take a month to cool off yes. before you start shooting everybody. <laughs> but that's totally there on purpose and that's totally good. Yeah, yeah. If you're signing up for that, wait a year. For, I think, a year to decide a 50-50 chance whether you're mm -hmm. going to die or not, yep. I think that's pretty good. And also, I would even extend it to, like, like maybe for, like, a pay-per-view event a year is appropriate. If two men disagree and they both want to do this, maybe do the 28 days like a gun thing. Because certain situations, certain decisions need to be made before a year passes. You know what I mean? Like, like mm -hmm. let's, say, let's say, for example, that two men... Let's bring it back to the cheating thing. Two men like a woman. Okay. And the woman, you know, they, they both want to be with her. <laughs> the woman likes both men. <laughs> like, oh, too many men. What are you going to do? Um, <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So two men both like the same girl. I'm not saying this is going to happen all the time. But, like, if there's a situation where they're saying, like, okay, we will, like, duel like, as it was in, like, fucking Barry Lyndon, the film, yeah. where, like, we pull out our pistols, yeah. but it's modern-day Glocks, right, and it's in a controlled right. environment where no one else is going to get hurt. <laughs> then, yes, if you were to do that, I think that should be allowed. Yeah, 30-day waiting period, wait a month, everybody chill out, make sure they want to do it. I, really, still, you know? I still think a month is not enough time. A year is I too meant, long, I would you have... say six months? I'd be chill with six, because a year is so long. Yeah, but a year, like... Let's say on the 364th day, you're like, wow, okay, maybe this is not a good idea. Like, you you did something, and you're like, wow. Like, you did something that changed your mind. What if you... I, we're talking what ifs here. We are. We are this whole show is what ifs. <laughs> I, 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 I'm kind of firm on a year. Okay. I'm kind right. of firm on it. In that case, I can still get down with it if it's a year. Because, let's say two men disagree. It could be really over anything. Anything small or large in any sense. But, like, let's say... I don't know that you have like a stalker, okay? okay? Like somebody's stalking you, Joe Quinn's house, and is just like, oh boy, do I love mass implications so much? I can't wait to, <laughs> I can't wait to sleep over Joe Quinn's bed and stare at him all night. While what if that situation happened to you, and you were like, please go away? And he's like, no. Even if you get a restraining order, he can still be a hundred feet away from you. He can still just stare at you, hundred and one yep. feet away from you, <laughs> like that. Mm, binocular. You, you could just say, hey, dude, if you love me so much, let's let's duel. And that's what I will do. And then if he says yes, wait a year, boom, one of you gets out. Right. And that that solves it. So it's it's just an extreme. I got version. to kill Joe <laughs> for massive obligations. Woo! Yeah. And then that super fan of which we have like what like two, uh, two uh -oh, or three, Jake. maybe five super fans. Jake, I feel like if he can take me, he could probably take you. Oh no. I'm, <laughs> I'm next on the chopping block. I better you, get good with a gun. At three <laughs> on the 364th day, you better be like mm, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, I'll just deal with the stalker. Um, no. So like yeah, in certain situations, really any situation that two men agree to or women, I'm not sexist here. Um, <laughs> two people agree to. I think it should be totally cool. And I tell you what, if you televise a tournament style, just like the old ancient Roman days in the Colosseum where mm -hmm. that was literally the point of that was gladiators fighting to the death. Gladiator, the film was amazing. If that was the point of that and that drove a Colosseum's worth of crowds, imagine in 2021 what that would do on any service that offers that. Right. Sorry, MMA, all of your numbers go down the toilet yep. because <laughs> killing things is on the table now. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> to to bring it back to another hot quality content video, the Speed Racer video, you guys are like, no one would watch regular racing if this is on TV. Yes! Thank you, because that's well, like that's, death racing. That's a, <laughs> that's a limitation right there. There's a limitation of like regular racing. Mm -hmm. So like... Whatever, screw you, regular racing. Yep. I'm going to watch fucking murder race. W what MMA is to boxing with just gloves with pillows in your hands, that is what t dueling would be to MMA. Exactly. Where, like, MMA, you can't actually kill them. You can't, you can't do any... If, if, if you pin them down and they're tapping out, the ref steps in. Exactly. But if it's dueling and, like, let's say... And there can be different types. Like, let's say there's a sword one. Let's say there's mm. just hand-to-hand -hand combat mm -hmm. one. Hand to hand would get pretty brutal. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, but like, let's say it's like fencing, for example. Like, exactly. this is like a sword on sword thing. That way, like, a well timed slash will win you the game. You you would probably just set the terms when like, like, like you you have a contract, right? Right. And you set the terms of the fight then, because then you're probably gonna want if if it is fencing, you're probably gonna want to go to like a fencing academy <laughs> and train up. You know. 
Right. <laughs> what, if right it's exactly. like, what if it's randomized? <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> no, I would never sign up for that. Exactly. I'd want to make sure I have everything in order. And then, like, in that sense, let's say that the reward, because the risk is the highest possible risk, mm-hmm. let's say the reward is, like, the highest possible. If you win a duel and you make it out alive, then you have, like, I don't know, 20 years worth of a high-paying job paid for life or something. Yeah, like basically. That. I don't know, like something huge. Or Yeah, because if... If we're giving away a million bucks on a game show called How to Get a Million Dollars If You Get All the Questions Right, it's not called that, but I'm paraphrasing it a little bit. Right. If we're giving away a million bucks for knowing things, why not give away big money like that to someone who won a duel? Exactly, because <laughs> if it were to be allowed to be if it were allowed to be televised, it could probably be like a good movie, right? You can show right. someone getting decapitated. And I'll tell you what, the revenue the extremely high revenue from that would fund whatever the hell like they would want in their life if they win. Yep. You know, because like you'd have each of them be like, okay, if I win, I want two yachts, a mansion, <laughs> I want a freaking. Not to mention galore. all like the endorsement deals you'd probably get oh from my it God, too. The sponsors that sponsors the winner, the guy who literally yep. won, buy this car. You know, like, exactly. <laughs> that'd be amazing. <laughs> oh my God, that'd be crazy. This and car's then, like, tough enough to get me in it. Right. Like and something then, dumb like that. Oh, and then imagine like you win a duel and you live like the luxurious life. Mm-hmm. And then like years down the road, you have like a guy who's like, I want to duel you for the for the title. And you come back. And then if like you lose that duel, then that speaks to that guy's skill. But if you win that duel, you are a two time reigning duel champion. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And to bring it back <laughs> to uh, like to uh, like have it be a year, I think having it be a year is actually even better. Build the hype. You build the hype, <laughs> and you can train. Yes. You have a whole year to train. Yes. If you decide that's what you want to do with that year, mm-hmm. you can do that. Why not? Yeah, and there's no short supply of people that would do this. Exactly. Is my argument to people who said no. Like There, there absolutely are people that would, day one, throw their names in the ring. Yeah, absolutely. And 100% be a guy absolutely. who Absolutely. 100%. I, I wouldn't. I like my life. But if I didn't like my life, it sounds fun as hell. That's not, it's not hurting me. (laughs) It's not like I'm forced into it. If anything, I would get quite the enjoyment out of it. Exactly. So that would be amazing in that sense. So So, dueling in general, I want to bring it back. Yeah. That's my number one. We kind of, we kind of agree. Oh, that's your number one? That's my number one. Oh, wow. Okay. What's your number one, Joe Quinn? Uh, My number one. Okay. I don't, I don't even need this laptop with my notes. Oh, no. Jake. Oh, he just put the weight of laptop. <laughs> Why on earth is the drinking age 21? Oh. I don't drink. I don't think I'm ever going to drink. But the fact that I have to wait three years after I'm already legally considered an adult. We talked about this earlier, and I smiled at you. I don't know if you caught that. But you said, like, you know, you know 18-year-olds that are super mature, or people younger than 18 that are very mature, and then people older than 18 that are not mature at all. Right. For alcohol, why is why is twenty one the magic number? Mm-hmm. All that's gonna do is that three year gap, because I would imagine most people around eighteen, that's probably where they're gonna be like, yeah, I want to have some alcohol. Right. I would imagine that's where most people are like, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. gonna have my first drink. But the fact that if at eighteen you drink, you're you're breaking the law at that point. That's that's just stupid to me. <laughs> Listen, this is no um. It, we're kind of going out on a much lighter note because you had like death duels. I did have death, and duels. I have. Yeah, <laughs> we should probably just change the age of. Well, no, I have a lot alcohol. to say about this. If you'd be surprised about um, that, okay. But, um, I, I would. Yeah. I would imagine you. I did imagine that you would. Um, even though one, neither of us drink, I want to point that out. <laughs> yeah. One thing. One thing I could say is like you could either just make everything be 21 as like that's a, that like 21 that's when you're an adult mm-hmm. that's when you can do everything right or you can bring it all down to 18 mm-hmm. which is basically it is except for like weed and drinking right of course so yeah that, that's basically it. there's a lot going on yeah so to your point i would say given the amount of things that you can do when you turn 18 like you can buy a gun yep. you can legally vote you can sign up for the army yep. you can kill yourself for your country on the battlefield yes but you cannot have a sip of alcohol right to me that is a massive lapse in logic that's a middle finger to that, you. that's a middle finger given the things you can do when you're an adult i mean you, you can have sex legally I, mm-hmm. I, the list goes on like okay you can literally go to maine Right, you can live in Maine and then like just step into Canada, 
And now you can drink at 18. Yeah. yeah like, that's, that's, that's why it's stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, all these other countries, their drinking age is 18. Again, I don't ever plan on drinking. But, like, whatever. If I'm going to be able to vote and change things in my country, you you are saying I'm an adult at that point. Mm-hmm. So I should be allowed to decide whether or not I want to drink. Right. you got to be consistent with it. And exactly. Like, to that point, too, I want to... You quoted something I said off recording. I'm going to clarify what exactly I said. Mm-hmm. I said that the line that says 18, you're an adult, I criticized it because there are people under 18 that are very mature, and there are people over 18 still to this day that are very stupid and very immature. Yes. But the reason why I'm not too up in arms about it is because there is no magic line you can draw. Every country chooses their line. Right. Everyone needs a line. There needs to be an objective <laughs> legal line between child and adult because mm-hmm. of certain very important circumstances. But there is no objective way to show someone's maturity. It is. It varies. Exactly. So you can talk about like physicality, but even then there's no day where you become after puberty. <laughs> like that's a slow ev- evolving process. So you need a line. You absolutely need a line. That being said, as mentioned, having every other important line at 18 except alcohol, which is 21. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's like one other thing you can't do at 21. I don't even know what it is. But like 90% of the things that you can do as an adult happen at 18. And alcohol is three years after. It's not even 19. It's 21. That's three years. Why is it three years? I don't know. I'll tell you what, too. It's like most people I know that are adults by now drank a lot more before they turned 21 than they do today. Exactly. Like, they got it all out then, and now, like, 21, it's like, it's cool now. It's the same similar argument to the drugs being legalized. You take the cool factor out of it. Yes. Because now, it, like, if your dad smokes weed, you wouldn't think, oh, fuck yeah, I'm smoking some weed. You'd yeah. Think, <laughs> man, my dad does it. It's not, you know, That's not cool. Kind of ruined Lame. it. You know? So, like... If you ruin doing alcohol or whatever at 18, then, I mean, there's going to be a lot less people out there between the ages of 18 and 21, Mm -hmm. you know, being idiots and drunk driving. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, drunk driving in general is universally demonized no matter if you're over or under 18, it's illegal. So that's still covered that way. Yep. I'm willing to bet that given, again, with Portugal and their legalization of drugs and they got went down with their numbers and statistics, America is a different country and context. People yep. have more freedoms in here than they do in most places. I'll give you that. But I would still say that if you lowered the drinking age to 18, maybe at first you'd see some wacky, crazy spikes. Other than that, I'm going to guess that the overall statistics of alcohol-related disasters lowers. Probably. Probably. because I, I would agree. Because most alcohol-related disasters are still between the ages of 18 and 21, at least to my knowledge. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's how I perceive it anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm totally with you on that. All right. All right. Well, uh, you know, with that, I think that's a good place to end off. That is. We got through all of our list, baby. I will say one thing before we read the outro and get into the comments. I cannot wait to do the inverse of this topic. Yeah. <laughs> 100% I cannot wait. Like, well, it's not obviously it's not going to be our next topic. <laughs> well, you know the problem is that we've already said almost every episode like, oh yeah, we're going to do a follow up, you know. So we, <laughs> this we is can't like prioritize this I, one. No, I know, <laughs> I know. But like, out of all the episodes we've done so far, this is one of the most hyped. I'm like to come back and do. Okay, a- is it a follow up if it's the reverse? Fair enough. Well, I guess it kind of is because it's like of. the other half of it. Right, know? right. So, so we'll get to it eventually. Mm-hmm. With that, Jake. And to wrap things up, we're going to hear what you guys have to say. As always, leave a comment below with your opinions and takeaways from today's topic, and it'll be responded to on the very next episode. Yeah, so guys, tell us, like, what you wanted to... what. Tell us what you think should be legal. Right, and we hold veto power if you comment something stupid. Yeah, don't but... be like, yeah, I think murder should be legal. Yeah, that. Well, I guess we would read that, but we'd also reserve the right to be like, that's bad. That's bad. That's so bad. I don't know about that. <laughs> Consensual dueling is not murder. That's mm-hmm. very different. Um, so, in any sense, I'm going to open up the comments here from last week because, of course, we have the comments from last episode that I'm stalling because I'm trying to pull it up real quick on my phone and I, I don't gotcha. have it yet. And I have it right here. Okay. Hot dog. Our last week's topic was who would you bring back from the dead? Mm-hmm. Now, I have with me a plethora, if you will, of comments. Right. I'm going to start with Brent Robinson because that's a certain situation where last time he said something um, that 
could be perceived as rude, and he's clarifying it. He's saying, while I appreciate being given the benefit of the doubt, Jacob is indeed correct in that when read objectively and without inflection, my prior comment is without question highly aggressive and demeaning in nature. I apologize for any offense I have caused him with my thoughtless remark. And we have a response from Joquin yourself. Yeah, real quick, I could not let this man wait two weeks <laughs> to hear like us like forgive him. Yeah. I'm assuming you forgive him. Yeah, yeah I, I 100% forgive him. I don't even him. think he did anything wrong, really. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> no, I, I, we gave him the benefit of the doubt anyway, and turns out he was actually being genuine, so that's yeah. pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's pretty great. I'm glad that it was all resolved. And he obviously meant no will intentions. We're happy to have you around anyway. Yep. For, hey, uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you're watching this episode. Our usual, regular, the Ling God, of course, comments. I would bring back my grandma and grandpa. They held out their illness just so that they could see me be born. They never got the chance. I want to show them the grandson their son has raised. He has more to this comment, but that's the end of that thought. I want to respond to that thought real quick. Okay. That's really... I'm blown away by that comment. Yeah. I... I have never experienced that. My grandparents on both sides are still alive and been fortunate enough to have that happen to me, and nobody can really choose that in their mm -hmm. life. So I've just been dealt that hand, and I'm very grateful. A lot of people I know have had grandparents pass. Yeah, I had a, uh, I had my grandmother and my grandfather both on different sides of the family. They both passed away, yeah. and as a, uh, relatively young, I was ten and eleven, mm -hmm. and it's rough. It's it's rough, but the fact that like you didn't even get to experience that. Like, when God, you didn't even get to experience that. I I am sorry. Yeah, that's really tough. And, you know, power to you for even, like, going so far as to type that out. You know, some people have that, like, as, like, a really sore subject or a personal thought. And um, we really, really appreciate you sending that in. Yeah. Um, the other half of the comment is, question, does coming back to life immediately turn you insane? I'm debating if they would become zombies or normal. Now, a couple things. One, I forgot to mention this. We would have mentioned family members on our side if we could, but we took them off the table. Yeah, we we at the intro to last week's ep uh, sorry last two weeks episode, we we said that we didn't want to get too personal with it. Yeah, and nobody listening knows who my mom is. Yeah, she's alive by the she's way. Alive. <laughs> That's a bad example. But no one <laughs> listening knows who a past family member of ours is. But right. In any case, the question that he's asking at the end, of course, does coming back to life immediately make you insane? Well, I mean, considering we haven't made zombies yet, we don't know. No. But in the question, we assume that they had the thoughts of their entire life in their head, yeah. even up to when they died. And so, they, and their body is their prime. So their brain is perfectly functional and right. healthy. So Einstein had like whatever 80 years of his life in his head, but restored at 25 for the question. Basically, Give or yes. take, is whatever his prime is. Um, so no, they would not go insane. Otherwise, you know... <laughs> what's Einstein going to do if he's clinically insane? Right. <laughs> Nothing. Right. Maybe to rephrase it, the way I, because it was my topic, the way I saw it is like they just teleport back into existence. Not their previous like dead body mm -hmm. is like given life again. Yeah. Because then you could probably make an argument for going insane and becoming a zombie because like that's their already existing body mm -hmm. and it's been rotting away for it, for, uh, for Homer. Yep. For quite a long time. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, oh my god, 2,000 years or whatever. Dust. Or longer than that, maybe? Literally just dust. A pile of oh dust. Oh my god. That'd be crazy. Uh, he comes back as like just the pile of skeleton dust that he is, <laughs> and is like, I'm going to write the Odyssey Part 3. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jake is excited, but he's like, how? <laughs> I'm excited, but like, can you hold a pen? <laughs> What's going on? Uh, no, all right. Well, yeah, absolutely. So we have a couple more comments. We have one from Ian. Famed co-host of Hot Quality Content. Woo! Woo, baby. He says, I think I would have to bring back invest not investors, but inventors <laughs> or artistic pioneers. Da Vinci, Mozart, Orson Welles. Like, imagine them seeing modern art or music. Imagine Orson Welles seeing modern CGI. Also like Robin Williams. We love Robin Williams here. That is an excellent point. Yeah. Like, kind of artistic individuals and creators and inventors and stuff mm -hmm. like that. To see the lasting influence that their work has had. And that's one of the reasons that I brought up Homer and the Odyssey. Exactly. Because fucking half the stories ever are just the Odyssey. Pretty I'm oversimplifying a little bit. I, like It's not right. that high. But it's it's had a lasting influence. Again, though, I have to bring it up, Jake. If Homer sees Twilight, he's going to be like, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> the Why did you bring me Odyssey. back? Why did you bring me back? It's not even like, it's just a story. <laughs> Yeah, but come so, on. Yeah, if Homer sees the Odyssey, I told you in that specific case, <laughs> you win. I concede. But no, but like bringing people, <laughs> I think I do think there's more value in bringing back artists, for mm -hmm. example, than right. bringing back uh, scientists. This is right. kind of like 
when, when we were talking about Albert Einstein, yeah, you had to catch him up on so much of the science. So mm -hmm. to the point where he would become useful again, if he becomes useful at all, that's such a gamble. However, yep. bringing back artistic people, that's, that's something I like I'm 100% down with because mm -hmm. art is always different. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And like maybe the, uh, what is accepted as culturally impactful or quote, quote, good subjectively has evolved over centuries, mm -hmm. sure. But, you know, he can catch himself up, like we've always clarified for that question, and be like, hey, okay, so I'm going to apply my natural talents to this situation and see what happens. Exactly. Which is why Einstein is a good pick, and you're wrong. Um <laughs> I Listen, I, I literally picked back. You can argue that I picked, like, five artistic visions. You I did. Picked, I picked a musician. Now that I think about I it, I picked yes. a director. I picked... A historian, which is the only one that you can argue, maybe that's not so artistic, but mm -hmm. it's Abraham Lincoln. Come on, it is Lincoln. And then I said, and I, I said an actor uh, and a, a game director who mm -hmm. later became a CEO. I tried to go for very influential people like Einstein and Jesus. And yeah, okay, <laughs> Hitler, but I did that. That <laughs> hey, was a very. Hey, specific... You know what? You brought you were bringing Hitler back to become an artist. Yeah, I wanted to turn him into a freaking artist that he was gonna be before he went exactly to crazy so, man hey. mode. So that look, whatever. <laughs> not it's not the point. But I do want to mention something else about Ian's comment where he said Robin Williams. I mean, I remember when Robin Williams passed. Ian and I actually together. I think we were at Six Flags. Really. And I had won. It was a flash hat because Six Flags has the Warner Brothers characters. Yes. And I won a flash hat. And five minutes after I won that hat, Robin Williams passed away. So that hat to me, I think I still have it in the closet somewhere. Mm -hmm. Is like I identify that hat with robin williams and it's like oh you know i get yeah you know, it's like a totem almost because right. th the point of that story is that his death hits you to the point Absolutely. where like like i know where i was like when that happened i know what i was doing i know how i felt i walked immediately over after winning that hat and finding out that news story i walked over to i think it was the smoking section of six flags and a lot of people my age were there and i was like hey robin williams just died and they were like what and i'm like yeah he, he just passed away just now and they googled it and they're like oh my god and we all had like this shared experience of just mourning and remembering like, oh, yeah. Aladdin is so great. Everybody has like a different Robin Williams movie. That's just their favorite. Right. right. Like, so he, like he yeah. he meant so much. Again, just a, it, what a fantastic actor. Right. It, it's it's sad that he took his own life. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you want to know where he could have gone. I really would love to see like if he were brought back, I'd love to say, hey, this is what happened after you died. This is how the world felt yep every single person on social media in real life anecdotally to me anyway like every single person ever was just like oh my god this is the worst i feel so strongly about that if he could have seen that i mean i don't know i think he'd feel a lot differently about his own life probably not that that would you know cure depression no, no such fucking thing but like that would at least like i'd love to see like his reaction to that you mm -hmm. know that'd be incredible and the last comment is from <laughs> Anubius. Oh, who? We recently played on HQC Game Night Episode One. He was part of the dude, uh, part of the people playing, yep. and it was really fun. We had a great time. He says, "I disagree." He does not say why or how or to what part. Yep. Anubius, you gotta clarify what you're talking about here. I don't know what you mean. What do you disagree with? You know, he's just gonna reply yes. He's just gonna reply good or fantastic. Yeah, super. Yeah, yeah he 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 know. I know what he's doing. I, I see his game. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you gotta play it too, Jake. Ha ha, very funny. But if you comment just something simpler without clarifying what you mean, we're gonna have to maybe stop putting the comment your specific <laughs> unclear comment on there still want you around but it's not very productive to the conversation right so. in any case thank you for sending it in thank you for listening and that'll wrap up our comments except yeah. we have one bonus one don't oh, we do we we do because of course oh that's right yeah i forgot about this yep yep during our aforementioned game night yep. hqc episode one we got a comment from ricardo santos i believe is his name i'm opening it up right now mm-hmm we both sent it to each other. <laughs> Funnily enough, yep. We uh, as soon as the live chat became available for the stream, we both sent the same message to each other. <laughs> it was great. Uh, so Ricardo Santos in the live chat says that this is specifically for massive implications. How would the planet behave slash people react slash interact and slash conversations with no internet or smartphones or PCs whatsoever? So I'm assuming he means like let's say now today, right? And all tech. You kind of proposed this, didn't you? I believe I did. Yeah, I think think that 
I'm gonna re. Oh, you know what? <laughs> now that I think, I didn't. Think I about think this. I did propose this. You a said, very similar topic. I said, "What if electricity stopped working or something?" Right. Like that, so right? all tech that required electricity just could yeah. not work at once. Yeah, that is okay. Yeah. I was gonna say we're gonna put this on the document. I don't think we have to. No, nope. I think it's already on there. <laughs> hey, Ricardo. We hey. You never know. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, no, I don't know if it's going to be next episode, but it's coming. Hey, it's a good enough topic. It is a good enough topic. and uh, Great minds think alike. <laughs> I guess they do. And to wrap that up, great minds do, in fact, think alike. We're going to catch you guys in two weeks for our next episode, episode eight. Joe Quinn is hosting and editing, so I don't have to worry about editing this stupid thing. Yep. Ugh. Load hey, off hey, my Hey, you got by far the longest episode we've done. I guess so. So. This is, this is a beast, huh? Yep, That's absolutely. That's crazy. I don't even know when we started. <laughs> oh my god it's been a bit it's been a bit it's been over an hour yeah, absolutely 100 percent been over an hour it's funny because like some of those topics were like a two minute talk and some were like a 10 minute talk. absolutely <laughs> so i'm excited to see the editing file on yeah. that one. i think our our animal rights talk or animal rights uh, exotic pet laws talk was the biggest wasn't it i believe so because i've like i just gave you a bunch of like reasons to disagree we we did a verbal neo in the matrix kung fu <laughs> real quick that was really cool yeah um yeah so catch you guys in two weeks for our next episode get those comments in about this topic on this episode here what illegal things should be legal to you anyway and put those in the comment section and next episode we'll read them out loud absolutely and catch you guys in two weeks see you later